Good evening and welcome to Season 5 of the Invictus F1 Performance League. We are at the Sochi Autodrome tonight for the first pre-season race. The 18 turn, 5.8 km, 3.6 mile length circuit um, will certainly prove challenging for all drivers tonight as we begin the new era of the Performance League. We do have some old familiar faces as well as some new faces, but as always, an old face with me in the commentary box is Malk. Good evening, Malk, and are you looking forward to Season 5 of the Performance League? Hello, Craig. You know me, the maddest commentator ever, and you just I just can't wait for this Performance League. I just cannot believe it's five seasons. Where's the time gone, Craig? Where has the time gone? Other, it's just unbelievable. Um, here's a question for you, actually. Do you reckon we'll match what we had last season, where we had eleven? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, eleven different winners in the performance league. Um, that again, that's going to be a big, big ask, and it's going to be tough, considering we've actually dropped two two good slots to an eighteen card grid. Um, I would like to say yes, I really would, but I think it's it's going to be difficult. I, I think, for me, I'm more focused on the exciting racing that we saw last season. Uh, it was certainly unpredictable, and uh, we definitely saw some wonderful overtakes. But are actually, they actually have been posted on the Invictus virtual reality. Uh, sorry. Virtual overtaking <laughs> Instagram page couldn't get it out there. Um, so yeah, if you want to see the best overtakes from last season, please go along to the Invictus Virtual Overtakes Instagram page, and uh, I hope that we can add some more to that this season as well, Mark. Oh, I, I think there'll be some cracking, cracking times on that one, and I reckon there'll be some really good overtakes because it's just unbelievable moments. Will we see? Three in the beds, loads this season of the other no, three-way battle of each corner. Or do you think it's going to be? Do you reckon it'll be close, or do you think it's going to be probably about a few few drivers? I know it's hard to say now, but uh, I think it's going to be really spread out tonight. With the first pre-season race, we're actually using equal performance rather than realistic performance. And that's just to aid the admins for car allocations ahead of next week. So uh, we do know that we've got very quick drivers in Stim and Rossi, who actually have tr converted over to no assists. So they may not be as quick as we've become accustomed to, but we also have some very quick drivers in the form of Nick Thompson, Nicky Betrayer, who's actually also converted to no assists, and of course the Bugster who has recently joined the Performance League. So the grid might be a bit spread out, but we might see groups of drivers together, uh, such as Giuseppe, Nick Thompson, and the Tories battling it out on track. So we're just waiting for the first cars to go into the hot lap. And it looks as if it could be Giuseppe, the Red Bull, as he just comes through the final few corners, just coming through the final corner, turn 18, onto the pit straight, looking to charge down towards turn 2. And who are you expecting to see setting the early pace tonight, Mark? For tonight? Um, it's going to be tough, because you, you haven't got, like, the lunch or... You know, like the old drivers who, you know, Delange, like the back to back winner of the Performance League um, champion. So yeah, Delange certainly did the Rosberg. So he's actually won the championship and actually retired from the Performance League. So we, we do have a big miss of uh, the challenging the, 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 the title winner this season. Um, definitely. It's, it's a big loss, but it'll be a, a new winner. At this season, um, I think I think Nick L. J. Thompson will be the, the will be the one to look out for. But obviously tonight, as you said, it, this is just to help the admins to make sure the car allocations is spot on, and try not to like you know pick a car that's superior for their you know for the driver and stuff. 
Aye, it's, a, it's also a good way to actually get an early psychological advantage over your rivals as the big star new to the performance league sets the fastest opening lap at the moment a 134.7 as Rossi runs wide at the exit of oh. turn 4 as we come down the end of sector 1 and Mr Stim using no assists on the provisional pole with a 134.5 followed by Giuseppe who ran wide at turn 2 so currently in third but that's certainly a time e- uh, worth beating at the moment that's not a time that will will hold them in good stead uh, Fasconi uh, back in the Ferrari in pre-season our current league uh, admin of the performance league sets a 136.8 followed by oh. followed by Nick Thompson who takes P2 at the moment with 134.6 so Nick Thompson looking very comfortable at the moment and very, very quick. Very, very quick, both Nicky. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Nicky thought he might get into pole, but he missed that by two tenths. I was going to say, Nicky, McLugby. McLugby, who was on form in F2 last season, he's the one to watch out for as well. And Ross, Ross has just gone into fifth with a 135.4. Spud has just moved up to 7th with a 136.1 on Super Softs. Um, I want to have your opinion, Craig, and I want your honest opinion. Do you think the old Softs is the good tyre to start? I know it's quicker, but do you think it's the, the best to start at, at Russia, or do you think the Super Softs, which Spud has gone for, is the wisest uh, option? I think that would depend on your overall pace. Certainly if you're one of the quickest drivers on the grid, then it makes sense to opt for the ultras getting a very good starting position on the grid and hopefully clearing your competitors behind. But drivers such as such as Sir Spud who they're not going to light up the the, the the timing screen, so he's going to have to use any advantage that he can. And I think that's why Sir Spud has opted for the super softs, looking to go quicker in the, the race at the end. Yeah. So a, a reasonable strategic call there from Sir Spud. Oh, oh Vascoen must have stopped in the pit lane. Uh, the pit lane has actually been disqualified from the session. So not the best start of the season for Vascoen. That's I'm speechless, Craig. To be honest, because I just didn't. We just did not even see what happened. And it's definitely uncharacteristic. Yeah, it's really unchar- uncharacteristic from from Vascoen. I think he must have got stuck, or must have got... Well, I don't think he would have got stuck on the um, entrance anyway, but, but it might be a, the, uh, an issue with the game, I don't know, but I can't really say, but at the minute it's, it's, it's hard to say. But I think it's going to be tough tonight, but obviously, as I said guys will be on equal performance so that it's easy for like obviously for Fasco and Mike the league admins of the performance league to get obviously spot on and try and get to help with the others um, I mean what would who would excite you the most this I know from tonight but who do you think will be your one to watch as well Craig uh just simply because I know that he's got absolutely blistering pace as uh, the big star, although he's currently sitting in fourth at the moment. Uh, I think we might actually see a season-long battle between the big star and Mr. Stim. So I'm really looking forward to that season-long battle, but just looking at Nicky's and Nick Thompson's time as well, it could actually be a four-way battle. Possibly five-way battle as well with Rossi uh, for the the drivers' championship. So four or five drivers, and we a strong possibility for securing the championship this season. Um, yeah. The trailer just locking up slightly, going into turn two, runs slightly wide. That will compromise his exit going along into that long sweeping turn three. Uh, the just. Sorry, carry on. No, carry on, Mark, please. Uh, you were going to tell uh, us about Jake Warrior. Yeah, he's just doing his actual lapping now, Craig. Uh, he's just coming past the end of 
the DRS is coming up to the... Yeah, long... just coming around turn three, the long sweeping left-hander. He did go out and track early on, but had bailed out of it, possibly making a mistake on the first attempt at the hot yeah. lap. I, yeah, I do apologise. What was you saying earlier, Craig, uh, with Betrayer? Was he doing a good lap? Uh, yeah, just slightly locked up, very new to the no assists. He was he certainly performed well last night in the Mercedes car in the no assist league, and that can only boost confidence as he um, attempts in no assists again tonight and Wednesday in the F3 league. So Betrayer trying everything that he can to build up experience with no assists, and he's just coming round turn 17, approaching turn 18, as he approach, it goes across oh. the start finish line and goes up to 8th with a 1.36 to a very reasonable time for a new no assist driver. Definitely. Um, just watching Jake coming up to the last few corners now on turn 16. Coming up to turn 17 now, passing the pit, en pit entry. Will he get a good lap? It looks like he might have to do another lap in because it's not quick enough. Yeah, his lap was invalid, invalid yeah, invalidated. So it'd be interesting to see what time he would make. He's only got one minute 40 left, Craig. So, as things stand, Jake, McLuckpy, Mike have not done a lap, Craig. They have not done a lap. Mr. Stim, Nicky and Nick, LJ Thompson, the, all the top three drivers tonight are already doing their lap in now so i'm just watching mr stim now coming up to the long turn three now i think a good first sector time is must be about 33 seconds or just about yeah i think you're aiming for low 34s uh, as mr stim sets a 34.1 it did have a little bit of traffic in the form of mercedes drivers or spud as he was just coming round turn 17 and 18 but what uh, is spud just lifted off, giving himself some space, not wanting to get the dirty air. As uh, Nicky's just coming round sector two at the moment in the Force India, but Mr. Stim still holding on to provisional pole as he just approaches the back straight along the second DRS zone, approaching turn 13. Can he turn that car and he gets the McLaren turned in perfectly. Goes round turn 14, allows the car to run round. There's a little bit of a slide as he exits turn 14. I'm not sure if that's compromised his, his time. Uh, he certainly hasn't lifted out of it, Malk. He's continuing with his lap. And why not? With 14 seconds remaining till the chequered flag. Exiting turn 17, allowing the car to run wide onto the apex. Round turn 18, it does. So Mr. Oh. Stim, despite... Sliding the rear of the car at turn 13 and 14, it goes quicker by three tenths of a second as Nicky comes round the final corner. Oh, he improves slightly by two tenths of a second but remains in P2. Nick Thompson just rounding turn 18, can he improve in oh. P3? Oh, he oh. puts it in pole with a 134 <laughs> flat. So impressive, oh. Nick Thompson in the Ferrari. But the bookster oh. on the hot lap in the Renault. He's just coming oh, along the back God. straight, approaching turn 13. So can the bookster take it from Nick Thompson? Can he take Paul? Just comes round turn 13, has to get the car round to the right for turn 14. Oh, here we go. Turn 15. We're going to turn 16 now. He's doing it perfect on those corners will he get into turn 17 we get an extra exit here oh it's a beautiful turn here he's gonna get it perfect 31 32 33 oh oh my god oh my god that was close so we have the top three drivers with a 34 flat very close so far for qualifying but jake water and mclaren just coming round turn 16 on the run down towards turn 17 and 18, the double right hander on his return to the Performance League. And Jake's oh, actually. Mr. Oh my god! Absolutely lightning time from Mr. Stim as he sets a 1.338. Very mighty 
from system and I th- certainly think he's reserved himself a retreat in the Sauber car for next week's Australian <laughs> Grand Prix. So the qualifying classifications yeah. are Mr. Stimmon McLaren takes pole with a 1.338 with a gap of two tenths of a second is Nick Thompson. Third is the big star Nicky takes fourth. Giuseppe fifth, McLuggy sixth, Rossi takes seventh. On his return to the Performance League, Jake Warrior takes eighth. A spud in the Mercedes takes ninth. Betrayer takes tenth. Notorious will take eleventh. Mike did not set a time, and Fasconi was disqualified from the qualifying session. Oh my god! Oh my god, Craig! Do you think we're going to see that in the whole season? whole season of the performance league again those close close battles going on um oh well i certainly think if it uh, remains this close all throughout the race then why not why won't we have this all season long and i think this is actually going to be a straight sprint to the finish with the sochi being a one-stop strategy um, it is very safe to go from the ultras onto the super softs, and I don't expect to see anything different from tonight unless there's early front wing damage where drivers might opt to go for the soft. Yeah, I think um, if he was in that position, Craig, do you think he would have gone for the soft tyre, or do you think he would gamble and go for the ultras and see how it goes at the back? I know, depending on the situation. Um. So. Yeah, I think it's it's quite hard to actually work that out unless you're actually in it. Um, so, I mean, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see what happens tonight. Certainly, um, the crossover from the Ultras onto the Supers is normally scheduled from lap 11 onwards. But last night after early contact and damage uh, from a front wing, I was able to put on lap 8 and take the Supers to the end. So it's all about tyre management and how hard you're actually battling the competitors round about you. And we might actually see a four-way fight between Mr. Stim, Nick Thompson, the Bookster and Nicky. Uh, the Bookster putting a little bit of pressure on Nick Thompson on the formation lap. He's sitting right on his gearbox. So a bit early on the mind games from the Bookster, they're certainly wanting his presence to be known as we just come round the formation lap. So a little bit of game playing from the bookster there oh i bet you would have done the same craig absolutely (laughs) absolutely (laughs) uh i think it was actually squat city last night i actually came right alongside them on the run down to turn two in the formation lap just to let them know i was there hello hello you're gonna see me that's it um i think the bookster will he have his booster seat on We'll see how it goes, but will Mr. Stim, Mr. Stim, just casually driving, uh, try and get those tyres warmed up, and it's going to be very intense moments here, ladies and gentlemen. If you just joined us, thank you for um, joining, and uh, we'll, hopefully we'll give you a cracking race tonight for the performance league. If you just joined us, Mr. Stim, out of nowhere, out of nowhere, did a one thirty three point eight. Oh, Rossi and McLuppy got disqualified from the session. So we'll have to see what's happened there. Um, but I think, and I think we that. will. I think we will be enforcing um, the penalty, the 10 second penalty for contact on the formation lap, because it's all about allowing space between each driver. There's certainly no reason to make contact in the formation lap. So. Although it will be allowed in pre-season, it won't be penalised. Certainly in the official races it will be, and we will be requiring footage from both drivers to review the contact in the formation lap. So as we wait for all cars to form up on the grid slot and for the race director to get us underway for race one of the fifth season at Invictus Performance League, we have five red lights. We are, go, 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 it's Stim, lights up the rear tyres, gets a little bit of wheel spin, that allows Nick Thompson to come alongside in the Ferrari, but the Bookster in the Renault just tucks in behind the Ferrari, oh, oh my god, there's a Mercedes, it's actually went off track, it's a Spud, so Spud receiving, ter- receiving terrible damage, and that's an early retirement from Sir Spud. I, I just saw that, Craig, that was just, 
I don't know what happened there, but I think that was the Renault of uh, Notorious, I think. I'll have to watch the replay of it. But Oh, Nick, it, it goes down the inside of the bookstore at turn three. He has the inside oh. lines, he comes along into turn four, but the bookstore has his nose ahead. Oh, my God. Ross has moved up to fifth. But Meg Lugby. Oh, my God. Oh, the two Red Bulls. The two yeah, Red Bulls. Two on Red Bulls side by oh. side. And that's Meg Lugby. Meg Lugby will be on the outside. Oh, he does it. He gets his nose ahead of Giuseppe. So, Just. Meg Lugby moving up to P6. Very respectful driving from Giuseppe, allowing that space. Oh. Nick Helter jumps up, come in with it, has a Yeah, he has a little look on the inside at turn 13, but he just oh, can't get Lugby. close enough. He can't get close enough to Mr. Stim, so Mr. Stim maintains P1 as the bookster in the Renault, looking to seize any opportunity from contact between Mr. Stim and Nick Thompson. Yeah. Craig, I do apologise, I couldn't get my words out <laughs> just, um, but I just saw Nick close in on Mr Steam, I thought he would have um, closed in on trying to do the Banzai moment, but unfortunately it didn't work out, but the Bookster, he's got some boosts on his car in the Renault, will he beat Nick L.T. Thompson on the first day of rest day? No, he won't, will he try, he's going to try and hold it there. Yeah, oh. we've lost, we've lost the toe after Mr Sir Spud retires and leaves the session so we are pro possibly have lost the toe due to one of the glitches in the game and certainly we hope that that does not restrict us from having spectacular races the books to having a little look on the inside of nick thompson going defensive very early from nicky behind as we approach turn four uh while you're watching that craig mike mike oh what a move yeah, he goes Not up the inside move. of the McLaren and Jake Warrior leaves the door wide open and I can tell you are really impressed with that one, Malk. Oh, you betcha, sunshine. You betcha. Mike, out of nowhere. I think, I think Jake Warrior, yeah, Jake Warrior's got a little bit of a front wing, front wing damage, Craig, from earlier, from, um, I think it was from lap one. Uh, coming up to the uh, coming up to turns uh, 14 and Giuseppe, 15. Giuseppe, Giuseppe and the Red Bull trying to close down Rossi and the Williams as we go through turn 13. Rossi goes deep into the exit of turn 13. That allows Giuseppe to close down the gap as we come round turn 15 and 16. The off Quamba part of the circuit. Uh, Mr. Stim beginning to open up the lead now by nine tenths of a second to Nick Thompson is the bookster maintains his gap to Nick Thompson, the gap now half a second, 0.5, but Nicky 0.3 of a second behind the Bookster, DRS now in activation, as we run down towards turn two, the Bookster has a little look on the inside of Ferrari, that allows Nicky and the force into to close down the gap right on the gearbox of the Renault of the Bookster as we come round that long sweeping left hander at turn three, Nicky just holding on to the gap from the bookster has a tighter entry into turn four. Oh my god, Craig! This is only lap three! Oh, you beauty! Come on! We need some more! Oh, I'll tell you what, Craig. I'm still speechless with Mike's overtake on, uh, on Jake Warrior. That was just absolutely epic. I don't know why, but that was just absolutely epic. And I can't stop saying epic. Because I think Nicky might do the uh, get on the booster. Uh, will he have the booster on his car or the boosts or whatever you call it? But we'll have to wait and see if Nick, Nicky, Nicky, as a, it because of that toe uh, glitch, shall we say, or the issue with the game. That's why we can't get closer, closer stuff. But as you said, Mr. Stim's pulling away about 1.5 seconds, Craig. From yeah, Nick Thompson. and the thing is as well, Malk, Nick Thompson's beginning to hold up drivers behind him in the form of the bookster Nicky, and because of that, Meg Lugby's actually getting in in this action as well. The gap now nine tenths of a second between Nicky and Meg Lugby, so this could be a possible four or five way battle for second place. Well, we might have another battle here going on, but. I Rossi has lost a bit of his front wing. He might have had a collision with Giuseppe. Just, I didn't see what happened, but he has lost a bit of his front wing, Craig. But we'll look like we had another cross battle. But Bookster, Bookster, unbelievable. Will he get closer to Nick on turn three? No, he won't. We will try and get it to turn four. Um, 
Rossi's gone on the soft tyre, Craig. Rossi has yeah, gone on the soft so tyre. Ross, Rossi looking to go to the end of the race after that early contact. He's got nothing. He's got nothing to lose, Craig. Tonight, he's got, he's just got nothing to lose. Um, so I, I would have gone the same if I, if it was me. Would have gone the same. But Betraya, Betraya and Pascane. Oh, mamma mia! Will he do it? Will Betraya? Uh, he's got uh, Nicky, Nicky, all, Nicky's actually all over the back of the bigster, oh. but because of the toe. Uh, we've lost the toy, just cannot get close enough to the bigster. And H Nicky's DRS is actually being neutralised by the bigster's DRS, which he's actually getting from Nick Thompson at the moment. So Nicky might actually have to get this done under the heavy braking zones into turn two. Will you risk it for a biscuit, Craig, in the next, next lap? Or do you think well, he'll wait? Um, well, I think he's actually going to have to take a chance because Meg Lugby is just, although he's He's out with the DRS, a gap now 1.3 seconds. He has, Nicky has to be aware that Meg Lugby is just hovering in the background, just waiting for any opportunity. Perching. Is that the right word to say, like perching or just Yeah, like he's perching, perching there like an Alonso, just waiting yeah. for any mistake from the drivers ahead, and it will allow him to move up and gain position. So Meg Lugby looking to play the long game. Yeah. Um, just... I just saw a little bit of a bat. There's a battle going on between Jake and Rossi. Um, ooh, Rossi looked like he was going to go hit the wall then nearly. But Nicky, Nicky, he's, try, he's trying everything he can. Nick Eldridge Johnson is holding on for dear life for second place, Craig. As you said, yeah, he's we defending have very, He's defending very well against some very quick drivers. So Nick Thompson looking very strong ahead of his performance league season as well as the F2 league season. Oh, um, as we got down earlier, it was just an unlucky start for Suspud. Um, as we say about Suspud in all the years, he, he's a great driver. And one season, I think he should have won it, I, my personal opinion. But obviously, I can't say from this race, but do you think Suspud has got a chance? Um, in the season or do you think it's going to be tough again uh, I think that's going to come down to how quickly he can move on up, move uh, move on from tonight's uh, poor start to the season so as long yeah. as he gets his head down and just focuses on one race at a time then he has every chance of uh, of putting himself within contention for the title yeah definitely I think see, we'll see how it goes but Hopefully, this right. Obviously, this Sorry, I dropped here, Mal, but the Bookster just going down the oh. inside of Nick Thompson at turn two. Oh. So the Bookster gets it done under breaking, but Nick Thompson having to go defensive very early because Nicky is certainly on the charge, wanting to hunt down the Bookster. Oh, yeah, oh, he had no. a little look down the inside at turn four. Decides better of it and lifts off, allowing Nick Thompson to carry on down the track so Nicky just holding position in fourth at the moment but he'll be certainly sensing that there's an opportunity for an overtake Nick Thompson with the DRS zone oh we've seen two great overtakes Craig which one would you pick at the minute and it's only lap six of um, the first race. just because of uh, my own last night I have to favour the breaking contest going into turn two. Fair enough, fair days. I would go for that one, but I'm still shocked with Mike's still. Um, but the Bookster. Oh, I don't, I, and what's I'm what's speechless. also su what's also surprising, Malk, is that although the Bookster is overtaking Nick Thompson, he's not actually getting a, a good gap on him. So Nick Thompson's still within DRS range. Uh, the gap six tenths of a second with Nick, Nicky within four tenths of a second so P2, 3 and 4 separated by one second at the moment definitely um, the ultra softs Craig how long do you think they last well brand certainly new? Oh, well, brand new, certainly the window for the pit stop should come in at turn 11, sorry, lap 11 
to 14 so we've got a big window for the pit stop as Nicky is all over the back of Nick Thompson will he go round the outside at that long sweep left hand oh, oh he, does it. he goes on he goes alongside and gets it done under breaking but he's still oh, alongside he's still alongside the Ferrari of Nick Thompson oh. who's going to break late Nicky oh Nicky has to just oh, cut the corner to avoid contact but both Ferrari and Force India still alongside as we approach oh. the Nicky yeah, oh, Nicky just cutting the apex slightly. Oh, so good oh. wheel to wheel driving from Ferrari driver Nick Thompson and Force India driver Nicky as Rossi receives a five second stop go penalty for speeding in the pit lane. And, and Rossi does left. leave the session. So, oh, Nick! Nicky! Oh, no! No! Oh, to the bed! Oh, you! Oh, unbelievable! Yeah, great defending there from Nick Thompson in the Ferrari, but fantastic driving from Force India driver Nicky and Ferrari driver Nick Thompson not making any contact, so great wheel-to-wheel -wheel action. But that's allowing the bookster to start to open up the gap uh, between himself and Nick Thompson. The gap now three seconds. Oh, my God. Our voices are going to be gone after tonight's race, Craig. We won't do any more commentary. Well, I'll tell you what's exciting, Mark. That now that the bigster is in clean air. Oh, and I have to interrupt myself there. Oh, <laughs> is Nicky I'm making sorry, a Craig, move on Nick but, Thompson? Oh, oh my God, Nicky! Nicky thought you lost it, but a turn three. Oh, I'm sorry, Craig. I didn't mean to interrupt there, but this is an intense moment here. Oh, oh we see a repeat from the king goes down the inside. Oh, oh Nick Thompson oh, runs wide, no. almost loses the back, but Big Lugby looks to make a move on the Ferrari driver of Nick Thompson. So oh. we could have a three way battle, but after that mistake from Nick Thompson, Nicky actually managed to secure P3. But I was what I was going to say before the action at turn two was now that the big star is in clear air, he's actually starting to reduce the gap between himself and Mr. Stim for the lead of the race. Definitely. <laughs> and we'll let you off, Craig, for interrupting yourself. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> It'll be all right. Um, as we see, Meg Lugby has got a three-second time penalty for multiple warnings, Craig, earlier. So that may compromise his penalty situation here with this powerful third place. But if I was in Nick... LG Thompson's shoes I would pick now for yeah certainly no actually you can pick for the super softs and get them to the end of the race um, but with the okay. three way battle it's going to be interesting to see who blinks first going for the possible undercut so we could see a three way battle for the final podium slot at the moment as the bigster continues to cut down the gap between himself and Mr. Stim. It's now reduced to 1.7 seconds from two seconds the lap prior. Oh, I, I'm speechless. And we've only on lap nine, Craig. We're on lap nine. And, we've, and it's followed on from last season of the Bowser. Well, I, I will top trump you from lap nine and mention that we're actually on pre season race one. So if Sorry. this is get anything to go by, we're Sorry. going to be in for another fantastic season, Malk. I think we're going to be witnessing something spectacular this season. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I would agree with you on that one, Craig, because I. I i.e. or i.e. I do not believe what's just happening tonight. In the This is the lap nine of the first pre-season race. Yeah, and Meg uh, is still closing already. down Nick Thompson. The gap now down to seven tenths of a second. So Nick Thompson's possibly starting to struggle with tyre wear after that battle with Nicky. And uh, Meg Lugby was just sitting back there possibly fuel saving and he could have fresher tyres compared to uh, Nick Thompson. So it'll be interesting to see right. what happens the next two laps oh. as we approach the tyre uh, crossover window. It looks as if Nicky's actually pitting. So Nicky first... Star. Yep, so Nicky and the Bookster both very early to react there. Uh, Bookster possibly looking to undercut Mr. Stim and Nicky looking to pre-empt the undercut from Nick Thompson and Meg Lugby. Oh, Nicky's going for the super softs. Same with the Bookster. 
Craig? Yeah, that should get you to the end of the race. As I said, I did that last night in the no assist league, pitting on lap eight, opting for the super softs and actually getting safely to the end of the race. Definitely. Um, obviously, the super softs last about 20 laps, isn't it? Yeah, certainly if you're very careful on your tyres and have got good tyre management, then certainly you can get them to last 17 laps to the end of the race. So Mr yeah. Stim would have actually have saw that the bigster slightly behind him has uh, pitted, and with Mr Stim not having anyone to battle, could actually look after his tyres a lot more successfully, and uh, you know go longer in the race and having fresher super softs at the end and uh, that will put them in a strong position a strong defending position uh, for those that may may um, try and challenge them for the race lead definitely um, the top seven Craig have not pitted yet the top seven have not pitted yet Bookster, Nicky, Jake and Notorious have all pitted once so the top seven have not pitted yet and the, uh, is it a 25 second um, uh, I think it's round about 24, 25 seconds um, by the time you go into the pits to pit exit as Nick Thompson comes into the pits uh, McLugby deciding to stay out on track the gap between himself and Mr Stim now 9 seconds so Mr Stim just coming round turn, turn 2 the chicane at turn 2 uh, maintaining the lead with uh, 9.1 seconds now uh, Giuseppe now moves up to P3, Mike moves up to P4 on the super soft tyres with Betraya still still to pit um, currently in P5 but the big star who has pitted down in P6 at the moment 3 seconds behind Betraya and they'll need to get this move done as soon as possible uh, so that he can maximise the grip that he has on the super soft tyres looking to get the undercut on Mr Stim. Well, as I said, the Bookster did overtake Nick LJ Thompson for um, that particular um, the pit entry battle, but his main one will be Mr. Stim. At the minute, at the minute, he is 25.2 seconds. Oh, sorry, 25.5 now from Mr. Stim. So it's sorry, tough. Sorry to interrupt you there, Mark, but the Bookster's just took a lightning amount of time out betrayer. And he's actually over the back of him as he come down the back straight. So the big star should move up to P5 with DRS and assistance. And he does. So the big star back up to P5 with Mike ahead by 7.6 seconds. Yet to pit, of course. But Mike currently closing down Giuseppe as Giuseppe now pits from the ultras. That will be a crossover onto the supers. But it looks as if McLugpe also has come into the pit, so the Red Bull garage will have to stack both Red Bull, Red Bull drivers. Uh, so Giuseppe's going to lose time here, and we'll see how quickly the crossover for the, the Red Bull uh, mechanics can muster. And it looks as if Giuseppe didn't lose oh, too much time. Bookster! Bookster, Mr. Stim! Mr. Stim coming out of the pits! Oh, the Bookster has undercut him! No! No, Stim! Oh, Stim. Oh, yeah, Stim ran away. He just outbroke himself trying to defend against the bigster. So absolutely fantastic strategic call from Renault and the bigster. Undercutting Mr. Stim moving up to oh, net P1 as Mike still to pit. Yeah, he's, I think he's the only one left to not have... Uh, yeah, he's the only one. I reckon he'll be on lap twenty, lap eighteen to twenty. Would you say, Craig? Yeah, Craig? I think you're right there, Malk. I think we might see it around about sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. But we're going to have a straight shootout for the race lead and race win as Mr. Stim has DRS on the run down towards turn thirteen. The bookster holding on to a four tenth gap. Mr. Stim just lighting up the front tyres, couldn't get the car slowed down into turn 13. That allows the bookster to open up the gap by one or two tenths. Oh my god, this is intense moments here, but um, this is absolutely, absolutely intense moments. Will Mr. Stim try and close in on the bookster, who looks like he is pulling away slowly, but 
he will compromise his tyre wear at the end of the race because he did get about, was it two laps? Was it one lap or two laps ahead of Mr. Stim? When he, uh, I think that was actually two laps, but Nicky in the background down in P4 beginning to take out two tenths of the lead between himself and Mr. Stim as well. So uh, while the Bookster and Mr. Stim are battling on track, Nicky can actually close down the, the leading two drivers once Mike pits. And uh, Nicky will be looking to seize any opportunity at the end of the race. Yeah, hopefully it'll be a good, some good battles here coming off. But looking at it, Michael dropped down to eighth, possibly, if once he pits, if he stays like this. So... Yeah, but the thing is with Mike, he'll actually be on the quicker tyres. So he'll actually have the tyres to get him back up the grid, possibly challenging for fifth or sixth. But he's got a couple of laps to, well, I say a couple, he's got about eight laps. Phil, well, pit, he pits, and he pit, he pits, anyway, but, um, just oh, depends. Mr. Oh! Stum getting closer to the bigster under, braking, locks his, locks the left uh, and right front tyre up slightly, and that struggles with his turn in, uh, and certainly that's vital down at turn 13 and 14. So the gap now down to 0.5 of a second as we come through the double right-hander. It turns 17 and 18. The McLaren of Mr. Stim all over the back of the Renault of the Bugster as we begin the run down towards turn one going round the, the, sorry, the little kink. At turn one, DRS open for Mr. Stim and the McLaren. Can he get closer? Making a move under, breaking into turn oh. two. Has a little look, but he's too far back behind the Renault. So the Bugster's Still able to maintain the lead over Mr. Stim as we come round turn three. We're still, still turn three, but we're coming up to turn fours now. Oh my God, will he, will Mr. Stim, the Stimmy boy, will he do it? Yeah, he's has a little look on oh, insiders' oh. contact between the Renault and the McLaren. Mr. Stim lifts off, allowing the Bookster. Bookster go, gives a little wave and thank you for Mr. Stim just lifting off and giving him the place. Yeah, while you're watching that, Craig, I just thought go to Mr. Petraya and Vasco. Vasco's knocked off six tenths of Petraya, but might go back to Mr. Stim in a bit. Oh, this is intense moments here. Oh, fair play, fair play. So Mr. Stim tucks in behind the rain of the big star as we begin the run down towards turn 13 again. Mr. Stim, can he get through turn 13? Slight lock up again at the front tyres, but gets a better turn in. At turn 13, goes deep in turn 14. That allows the bookster to open up the gap slightly, but Stim has actually managed to close down the gap in previous laps, coming through 14, 15, 16 and 17. So it looks as like if Mr. Stim's slightly stronger through this section of the track compared to the bookster, but the gap between them, themselves and Mike is now 1.4 seconds, so Mike could come into play here with the bookster getting DRS off of, uh, Mike's car as well. He'll need to do everything he can. Meg Lukic got the fastest lap of 136.6. Um, Pascal did get overtake, did overtake Batraya, but he, I don't know if he Batraya made a mistake. Mr. Steve's got a three-second time penalty, Craig. He yeah, has got a three-second time penalty. Yeah, extended the track uh, limits a few times in the previous laps, and certainly the chicane he's picked up that three-second penalty. So he's really driving the wheels off the McLaren, trying to re get, retake that position from the Bookster, but the Bookster defending spectacularly well and that is allowing Mike to maintain the lead by one second but oh. if the bookster can close down Mike oh. the next couple of laps he will get DRS as well which will neutralise Mr Stim's DRS on the back straight here we go here we go the first DRS stroke on turns 10 11 now and then we've got the kick of the 12 in a bit but yeah, Mr. Oh, Mr. Stim had a little look oh. on the inside, tucked back in for the toe, gets alongside the Renault of the Bookster, turn 13, the Bookster goes round the wide, uh, turn 14 oh. and retakes P2. So a great dogfight between the Bookster and Mr. Stim Mike's mistaken. on lap 15. So the Mike, yeah, Mike's opted to get out of, this, out of the way of the Bookster and Mr. Stimmy comes into the pits and should cross over to the ultra soft tyre. He, he should be on the ultra soft, but will, will, yeah, will Mr. Stimmy close in on the Bookster? 
definitely got a booster at the back to try and boost him up to first place and hold Yeah, he's got a great run on him, Malk, and Mr. Stim looking to go round outside for the cutback. Oh, oh, he's pulled oh. it off. He's alongside the Bookster and the Renault oh, coming no. round the long sweeping turn three. The Bookster has his nose slightly ahead. Will Stim try and get under braking in he's the turn it. four? He tries it, but the Bookster allows the car to have the pace to run round the, the outside of turn four, maintaining the lead from Mr. Stim in P2. Oh, my God, Craig. Thank God, this is pre-season. This is unbelievable. We need more. We're looking forward to this. Um, and we don't, I don't know what to say next. I just don't know what to say. Well, after a two-week break, the Performance League is certainly back with a bang. And the Bookster and Mr Stim are certainly providing the fireworks on track at the Sochi Autodrome. Oh, Will he do it if he beats a Cusick? Again, Mr. Stim looking to go round the outside at turn 13. Goes for the cutback. Goes to the outside at turn 14. Goes for oh, the cutback and at turn 14. Oh, right. no. Yeah, Mr. Stim underestimated the Bookster's exit speed. And there's damage on the front of the McLaren's wing. He'll have to pit. He will get close to Bookster. Yeah, he's certainly close. going to struggle with understeer and he has to be wary of Nicky and the Force India beginning to close down the Bookstown Stim as they're continuing to battle on track. Yeah, Nicky will close in on Mr. Stim. As I said, the interval leader, He, if, if Mr. Stim does pit, he will lose possibly about six places, five, six places, I think. And after his pit stop, Mike came back out on track in P7, 5.5 seconds behind Giuseppe, but Mike is on the quicker tyre. Do you reckon? Do you reckon Mike will get up to possibly fifth, or do you think? Uh, I think fourth? he could possibly get sixth, but with an 11 second gap between sixth and fifth, it's certainly going to be a tough ask with 10 laps remaining. You never know, Craig, you never know in this performance league. You just never know until the fact lays things. And unfortunately, we haven't got that, so we've got more performance leagues coming up soon. We've got Mr. Steve Cosin on the DRS straight. And you've step. got the... Nicky right behind McLaren driver, Mr. Stim as well. The gap, four tenths of a second. So Nicky has managed to close in the gap between the Bookster and Mr. Stim as they've continued their battle on track. Well, while Nicky was trying to close in on Mr. Stim, he has got a three second time penalty, Craig. So that will compromise his position as well because both Nicky and Mr. Stim have at least got one penalty each. I don't know if they've got more because we were trying to see if there was any other battles going on. But at the minute, the Bookster will be having some definitely champagne drinks later if he keeps his performance on. And he's pulling away slowly but Nicky 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 he's closing in on Mr. Stim Mr. Stim Mr. Stim I don't know what to say next it's going to be like a song lyric next but will Nicky oh Mr. Stim got another three second time penalty Craig he has got another three second time penalty so, so advantage possible advantage to Nicky uh, at the moment if Nicky's only got a three second time penalty it doesn't have to fight Mr. Stim to move up to P2 like we saw with uh, Nicky and Betrayer last night. Nicky finishing P2, but after penalties were applied, that moved the uh, Betrayer. As Mr. Stim runs wide, uh, loses the rear end of the car as he's actually trying to put power down. Runs wide again, so Mr. Stim doing everything he can to continue the fight with the Bookster, but he's fighting against the lack of downforce as well. And a slight contact between the Force Indians and Nicky. Try to look up the inside of Mr. Stim. Mr. Stim just closed the door. Oh my god. Will, will Nicky. Nicky's gonna go try. try oh, it looked like he was gonna go for the Banzai moment. Um, oh, Nicky just minute. taking a conservative approach at the moment, Mark. He's just biding his time. He knows that there is nine laps remaining of this first pre season race. And he I could just be using this time to size up Mr. Stim. Uh, I mean, he knows that tonight's race is just a practice. There's certainly no uh, contribu uh, contribu uh, contributing points, <laughs> I'll spit it out, to the championship. <laughs> so he could just be using this opportunity 
to put Mr. Stim under a little bit of pressure to see how hard Mr. Stim will defend and any, you know, repetitive defensive moves. So he could actually use this to build up a picture of how Mr. Stim drives that car. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at the fuel situation, Craig, um, for each car. Nicky has got little fuel than Mr. Stim, who's like the second closest to fuel. And then the Bookster, the Bookster that Faruska, Faruska? Or Bookster, Booster, whatever you call it, that he's got a bit more fuel than the, than the two drivers behind him. So, as I said, Bookster gain advantage and will probably win the the first pre-season race if he can maintain his position. But Mr. Stim's closing in, in despite that front wing damage, Craig. Yeah, Mr. Stim doing a very good job with the lack of downfall, still maintaining that, that gap to the bigster who, as you had commented, Malk has more fuel compared to Nicky and Mr. Stim in P2 and P3. This. Who's impressed you the most, Craig, after lap 19 of 27? Of the uh, certainly the race. bookster. I didn't know that he was a very quick driver, and it's certainly not a bad way to introduce yourself to a league. But Mr. Stim holding on to that gap to the bookster with front wing damage is certainly impressing me so far. Um, but Nick Thompson also impressed in qualifying, and uh, that's a very impressive qualifying display ahead of tomorrow's F2 race. So, there has been a few drivers impressing me uh, for various reasons, and Betrayer still doing very well uh, in his uh, early career on the no assist, down in ninth, uh, holding on to an 8.8 .8 second. Uh, oh! Oh! I'm sorry, Craig, I didn't mean to interrupt there. It looked like Nicky was going to try and go for the inside on Mr. Stim, but it didn't work out well there because. Mr. Sim went out wide because of that front wing damage. Nicky thought he had the gap there, but he didn't take the opportunity. Yeah, it looks, as if, there's a on, yeah, it looks as if there's a little bit of wheel contact between the McLaren and the Force India. Uh, Nicky, I think, just lifted off, just waiting for his time, and he will get an opportunity on the run down to turn 13 DRS. In effect, goes round the outside at turn 13. He's got his nose ahead of the McLaren. Oh, there's still wheel to oh. wheel as they come round turn 14 as well, but Mr. Stim, I think, lifted off, trying to avoid any contact between the Force Inda and McLaren. I think Mr. Stim knew that he didn't have the turn in due to the lack of front end grip and opted to lift off. Opted there, Craig, but um, it depends on how he can capitalise on this, but he will have the arrest. Nicky yeah, has so, less fuel. So can Mr. Stim return the favour on the run down towards turn two? He does have DRS. Nicky going defensive. Whoa. Mr. Stim looking to go round the outside, looking to get it done under breaking. Oh, it's a fantastic overtaking move by Mr. That Stim. Down in the chicane at turn two. Just goes right round the outside. Controls the inside. Great driving. Oh, fair play to Mr. Stim there. I was going to shout. There, Craig, but I lost my voice. I thought I'd let you do that, Craig. <laughs> Shouting, Come on, you can do it if you be a curate. And Mr. Sim has overtook there. This is unbelievable. And I've gone mad. This is unbelievable. Nicky don't know what to do next. But will he try and close in on Mr. Stim? He hasn't got much fuel. Same with Mr. Stim. He hasn't got much fuel. But will the Boogster? The Boogster's just like, well, I'll let you two have a battle. On the DRA, I'll have a extend that lead, Craig. Oof. Yeah, well, we've seen Nicky do a repeat of the last lap on the run down to turn 13. He's slightly further back than he was in turn 20. Oh, a slight lock up of the tyres from Mr. Stim, but holds on to the lead over Nicky for second place at the moment but while Mr Stim and Nicky are battling the Bugster are opening up the gap now 2.2 seconds so what uh, Mr Stim was doing while Nicky and the Bugster were battling earlier on the race the Bugster certainly do it in reply to Mr Stim and Nicky's battle at the moment on lap 22 yeah I think McLuhan has got another 3 second time penalty. as far as I know he has got 2 at least two penalties so he will stay in fifth for now 
but will Nicky, 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 Nicky! Oh, he thought he would have got the opportunity there, Craig, but he didn't take it again. He didn't take it. Yeah, certainly not wanting to risk any contact at the chicane. So Nicky opting to stay conservative, looking to do the overtake later on. He could be waiting for the DRS on the back straight, but he'll be looking to get closer than he was in lap 21. Uh, he was just too far back to get the move done under breaking at turn 13. So no. can he get closer in lap 22? There's a slight gap of five tenths of a second as we just come through the final few corners before the turn onto the back straight with the second DRS zone. So can Nicky get closer? There's a little bit of a, a loss of traction in the rear wheels as he was trying to get the power down. So he's got the run on Mr. Stim. There's three tenths of a gap. Oh, it looks like Mr. St yeah, it looks as if there's too much of a gap between himself and Mr. Stim. So Nicky will certainly have to get closer coming through the final few corners at turn 14, 15, 16, 17 and 18. Possibly try to get the move down on that run into turn 1. So yeah. Nicky might have to take a risk as we approach the final few laps of this 27 lap race. Yeah, while we're, while we're watching this battle, I mean, I'd like to say a big welcome. I know we said this later on, but Jake coming back into the performance league. I know he's based in 10th place at the minute, Craig, but do you think he'll do well? This season, I know. I think it. I think race. it might take a few races just to get the old rust off and uh, get back into the rhythm of online league racing. But we certainly know that Jake was a def was definitely a competent driver and racer, and uh, I'm sure he'll return back to that form. Yeah, definitely. He's closing in on Betrayer though, Craig. He's closing in on Betrayer for ninth place. Well. We want to try and get back to the Nicky and Mr. Sims situation, but but just but Jake Warrior, as I said, coming back into the Performance League, closing on Betray, who is on the no assists. Yeah, the trying to I, take the wider entry into turn 16, looking to get the better exit compared to the Williams driver Betrayers, but he's just coming round onto the final turn 18, uh, looking to get a run down on Betrayer into turn 2. Yeah, while well, we're watching that, Nicky. Nicky's close here on Mr. Steve on the second day on a straight. Oh, not enough. Not enough. But Jake, Jake's close there. Oh, oh, yeah, Jake. It was a bit cautious there, but I think Betrayer lost sight of him for a moment. So Betrayer lifted off and allowed Jake Warrior to pass, not wanting to make any contact or hold him up any further. No, I, I, I thought Betrayer was going to try and hold on for nine to there, Craig, but... He's trying everything he can, and fair play to him for driving in no assists tonight. Oh, Nicky, and right on. Sorry to interrupt you there, Mal, but Nicky, right on the gearbox. And Mr. Stim coming oh. round the kink at turn one, breaks the toe, comes round out to the, on the outside. Oh, no, no, so no, no, the no. force in there, Nicky, round the outside of the McLaren. Oh, great oh. driving from Mr. Stim. So great defending from Mr. Stim, just allowed the car to carry the pace round as uh, Nicky, I think, lifted off slightly. Uh, not sure where Mr. Stim was, so the battle intensifies. Oh, no. there, oh, Nicky loses it on the exit of turn four, but manages to regain control as he picks up a three second time penalty. That's, that will compromise his, pe his position again, Craig. But, uh, but I think that neutralises Mr. Stim's time penalty, so both Nicky oh, and Mr. Sorry. Stim yes. holding on to six seconds worth of time penalties. And this is a straight fight now for who will take P2. Here we go. Will we risk it for a biscuit? Will Nicky get second, Craig? Or do you think Mr. Steve will get it? I certainly think that's a tough one to call. Both drivers have been driving spectacularly and have been giving us some great entertainment. And I don't know uh, if I'm in a place to call it at the moment. Um, but oh, as we've been Craig. watching, I think Mr. Stim's going to take P2. Okay. Uh, but as we've been discussing that, Mike has closed down Giuseppe. The gap now 1.3 seconds. Yeah, I think uh, you was right earlier, Craig. I think possibly six is the best that Mike could do. Um, what do you think of his performance tonight, Mike? While we're watching the battle for Nicky and Mr. Steve, do you think Mike will do well? Or do you think it will be another tough season? 
Um, I certainly think that he's got the experience and the form. Uh, he could have actually just been doing a bit of game playing tonight because usually Mike's a lot quicker than the pace that he's been showing tonight. Um, possibly experience a little bit of difficulty in the Mercedes car. Um, or maybe a bit of strategic game playing in pre-season, who knows. But I certainly think that if he can maintain a uh, good form, then he's certainly in with a chance of uh, maybe not winning the title, but certainly being in the top three. Maybe possibly oh. second second or third. But I think uh, we could rank him as, uh, as an outsider for the Drivers' Championship. Fair enough. Um, as I said, Mike's a good driver, but Nikki, Nikki, Nikki! Yeah, oh. Nikki changing from the outside, going on the inside of turn 13, slight wheel bang from between, oh, sorry, between the McLaren and the Force India as Mr. Stim retakes P2. So, some very aggressive defending from Mr. Stim there as he ran wide initially, tried to come back on the track. And uh, slight contact between the Force India and the McLaren. Yeah, I think, I think Mr. Stim's holding on. We're on to lap 26, Craig, of 27 of the first pre-season race. And I'll tell you what, it has been a cracker. Yes, it? Yeah, it certainly has. But time is running out for Nicky. If he wants to take P2, as Giuseppe receives a three-second time penalty for multiple corner cut warnings. Oh, that means if Mike has not got any penalties, he's guaranteed six already. Guaranteed. Yeah, I think Mike will prefer to get that done on track, well. Would you so, do that, Craig? Yeah, I would do it on track. Fair enough. <laughs> I knew you would say that. There I is nothing that. sweeter than an overtake. <laughs> It'd be like Alonso um, with his deck chair. Yep. driving for chill, chill time but Nick Thompson's actually <laughs> beginning to close down the gap between them, uh, himself Nicky and Mr Stim the gap's reduced now to 2.4 seconds so maybe a last aggressive uh, sorry last ditch effort from Nick Thompson to seize the last podium slot but if Nick Thompson has not got any penalties he can actually jump both Stim and Nicky I think I think he'll jump Nicky, but I don't think he'll, uh, I don't know, I think, yeah, sorry, you are right Craig, he might jump into second, if he can hold on to try and close it, but you are well, right, he's, he's closing it. He's taking four tenths of a second out of uh, Nicky and Mr Stim the last few corners, so Nick Thompson looking very strong at the end of the race. Nick, Nick's... There. Oh, Nicky! Nicky, Mr. Stim! Side by side on two and a bit! Yeah, it's all or nothing bed. now! Oh, Mr. Stim broke late. It was a late breaking competition. And uh, Nicky and Mr. Stim just challenged each other to see how late they could break. But that allows Nick Thompson to actually close down Nicky the gap now one second. So, Nicky and Mr. Stim both compromising each other's race in their relation to Nick Thompson as uh, both cars battle it out on track. Oh my God, Craig. Well, what is going to happen tonight? It's just going to be absolutely intense moments here. But at the minute, he Nick will guarantee second place if he hasn't got any penalties, which I don't think he has. Oh, he's got a five second stop go penalty, Craig, because he went into the pits, because he went he put too much uh... ah and that will be applied to the end of the race because it yeah. usually gets applied on the second pit stop rather than the first so Nick Thompson will still receive the five second stop go penalty at the end of the race so this could mean Meg Lugpe Meg Lugpe to get third well we're just coming round the Meg... final few corners oh, of Big Star does take the race win on his very first race of the performance league. Nick Thompson does jump to P2, but as I say, that five second penalty should be applied after the race. Um, Mr. Stim drops to third, Nicky takes fourth, McLugpe takes fifth. Giuseppe just coming round turn 18, 
sh could take seventh after penalties are applied. It does so. Giuseppe drops to seventh with Mike moving up to sixth. Fascon just coming round turn 14 into turn 15. Uh, the off camber part of the track round turn 16. So Fascon should secure eighth with Jake Warrior taking ninth and Betrayer finishing in tenth. So a very exciting battle between Mr. Stim and Nicky as we wait for the classifications to come on. Um, we should see Nick Thompson drop down after that five second time penalty as applied. It maybe has been applied Craig, we don't know yet, we'll have to wait and see obviously but looking at it, um, I might be wrong but I'll have to double check but it did, he, I'm sure he did get the five second Oh, I do apologise if I get it wrong, but I'm sure he had the five second stop go when he came in during the pits. Or he'd probably be someone else, I don't know, but it might be, I might be wrong. I'll have to double check. But it's just absolutely, absolutely fantastic moment for um, for the bookster. And so, fair play to him, Craig. Uh, absolutely, in his very first race, he takes the top step on the podium and secures the race win. But this looks to be very exciting in terms of the season ahead. Uh, certainly close proximity uh, for the Bookster and Mr. Stim, as well as Nicky as well. So we could have a three-way battle for the Drivers' Championship. And uh, the final classifications for the race are the Bookster does take the first race win of the season, although it is in pre-season. Nick Thompson provisionally takes P2 with Mr. Stim in P3 with Nicky in P4. McLugpe takes P5. After penalties are applied, Mike moves up to 6th. Uh, uh, P7, I believe. Oh, I can't remember. I think that might have been... I can't actually remember, but Fasconi takes 8th. Jake Warrior takes ninth. Betrayer takes 10th. And uh, the rest of the grid actually retired from the race. So, certainly promising things ahead for the, the Performance League, Mark. It, it's just like an appetiser for, um, you know, for the, the league, for the league coming up. And what a cracker to watch it as well. Um, there was a few uh, incidents, obviously, but there was some, some cracking battles. I'm still shocked with Mike's battle um, and the boost and Mr. Stims. Out of them, oh, it's just unbelievable, unbelievable moments. And fair play, fair play to the Bookster um, and Nick, obviously provisional Nick, and um, Tim, third. So fair play to them guys, and uh, we'll see if they can hopefully get that big of a boost for next season. Do you think we will see more of that, Craig, or do you think it will be? less battles going on next season well this season um, no I certainly think the battles will continue uh, I don't see why they would change for any reason and um, we'll certainly discover with whether that's going to be the case next week in Albert Park Melbourne uh, when we do convert back over to the, the realistic performance cars so hopefully tonight's race will would have given the, the, the league admin some insight to where everybody else is in relation to pace and uh, we'll see how that, that plays out next week at Albert Park as I said for the second pre-season race next Tuesday definitely um, it's uh, you just do not know what to expect Craig and fair play to the drivers tonight for a cracking race um, but yeah it's just absolutely intense moments I mean I was as you said earlier Craig, I think my driver of the day is the Bookster. His first ever pre season well, first ever race for Invictus and for the Performance League and he's just won it. Not comfortably, but obviously won it. Yeah, but the, uh, the battle tar they certainly utilised the uh, the undercut to overtake Mr Stim, but it certainly wasn't easy in plain sailing from there. He had to fight hard. So, uh, definitely a good drive from the Bookster, but certainly let's not under, um, 
let's not Chris discount Mike. Mr. Stim because he, he did very well with front wing damage and uh, the lack yeah. of downforce in the race. So a good drive from Mr. Stim. Um, in tonight's race as well as, as Nicky, but very impressive from Nick Thompson as well. Uh, staying within touching distance from drivers who are uh, a tier above him in the, the Equal Performance Leagues. So, very impressive from Nick Thompson, and I'm sure that will continue as the season progresses. Definitely, definitely. Um, what's been your, before we shoot off, what's been your driver, uh, sorry, your moment tonight? Of, um, uh, certainly the strategic the call from the bigster just coming out just ahead of Mr. Stim after the Stim's pit stop. So, yeah, I always like a good strategic call. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I know you would, Craig, because if I was buying out with you and I was just about to try and get ahead, this is the England versus Scottish battle. <laughs> <laughs> I try and get revenge on the Euros, like all those years ago and stuff. But <laughs> fair, fair dues. But uh, obviously, Gaza won't be there to try and do the, uh, the flick over and stuff. But uh, we're probably talking about football, not F1. But Craig will kill me after <laughs> the commentary. <laughs> so that's what's happened. But Not at um, all. Not at all. But, um, but I just want to thank everyone who took the time to join us for tonight's pre-season race. I know it's not any official league races, but certainly it's not been disappointing either. Um, we hope that you all join us next week in Albert Park, Melbourne for the Australian Grand Prix, the final pre-season race ahead of round one, which will be the Mexican Grand Prix in two weeks' time. Oh. So we hope that you stay with us for this season. We certainly had a cracker last season and we hope that it's going to continue for season five. So thank you to everyone. Thank you to Mal for joining me as always. And we shall see you next week in Australia. Thank you, Craig. Stay classy. <laughs>